Hey guys, I'm in my shop and I have a stock box here that I am going to transform into sort of a base box or an air handler. It's a Goodman Air Handler ARUF 31, which is 17 and a half by 21. So I have my box here, which is 17 and a half by 21, supposedly. And I have my, I don't know, backup tape measure. It's like a 12 foot tape measure. But it is 17 and a half by 21, so it's the right size. 24 inches tall. I have to get a 16 inch collar in the side so that can go centered on the side. And then I'll put some cleats on it so that the unit will sit on top of it. And for cleats, I'm going to use the 90 degree standing S lock. So I can get my cleats here, put them on 17 and a half, 21. I'm going to bring those over here real quick. Comes in 10 foot sections. Standing S lock. Here's what it looks like on the end. Regular S lock, of course, is, has this section missing here. So it's just the S part. Base boxes. You have a shelf that things will sit on. That's what I'm going to do here. On the very front. Of course, the unit will slide into it, so this section will be flanged downward. But I'm going to cut all along this insulation because I'll be resting down inside of this a little bit, which you'll see in a second. Which you will see in a second. I'm going to cut about an inch down. Take that piece of insulation out. This is a flex duct knife. I don't use very, I don't use my install tools very much anymore. Because I do mainly service. But every now and then I get to break them out again. I did install only for many, many years. From the early 1990s all the way up to the 2000s. And I started doing a little bit of service along with it. Then the last you know, 10 years and then mainly service. Basically bending down a one inch flange, you can see there are little notches on the side of your tongs or hand seamers, whatever you want to call them. I've always called them tongs. Fourth notch is around an inch. That's what I use. Sometimes you can do a little bit less. If you need a half inch, you go to the second notch, about a quarter inch per notch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut one 20 and seven eighths, a little bit shy. When you're done with your snips, you just gotta put some ass into it. That's a technical term for a large amount of force is an ass amount. I have the regular tape measure like working people have. I don't know where that's at right now. At least I don't have my wife's pink tool set. They have those tools that come in a pink bag with a pink hammer and pink pliers. My wife has a set of those. At least I'm not using those. To so cut through some of this stuff, get a little bit of leverage against your leg. And then you'll get it down to a little bit. You can just snap it off. That's what I do. You see it fits in right here, it fits over. Come 
come down inside the box. That gives it a nice rigid shelf. Otherwise, you might have it start to try to give, but this standing S slot gives it a lot of structure, so you won't buckle the box in any area. Although with the seams on the ends here and here, it should hold up pretty good. But this gives it a little bit more rigidity. We we'll come and do the same thing on this side. Twenty and seven eighths. This box will be used on a job I'm doing tomorrow that I'm working with Mike Palace, Palace Enterprises. We are setting a two and a half ton Goodman GSZ 14, which is just their regular 14 sear split heat pump with ARUF air handler, as I mentioned before. And now, since they're 14 sear, instead of having an ARUF 30, 36, 42, and so on, you have a 31, 37, 43. A little bit larger, definitely a little bit longer. 53 inches tall. Alright, so we have those two sides there. And then we'll have one across the back. So we're going to measure that one. And it is 17 and a quarter because it kind of encroaches a little bit. So it might flare it out once we get it in place. What we'll do is we'll uh, flare it out and bend it out a little bit. I'll take my pliers, which need a little bit of oil. So it doesn't, because these are angled up a little bit. So I'll put the pliers on so I can bend them down. Get a little bit better angle. Off. Good. All right. Let's check again. We'll do 17 and 3 eighths. That's just going to be pushed out a little bit by the air handler. Pretty cold out here tonight. Tonight the low is 25. It's the first cold day. It's really first cold night of this winter. And it's in January now. Kind of abnormal even for our area. We have some snow flurries in the area. Of course they didn't come over here. Kind of we don't get a whole lot of snow anyway. But I was kind of surprised that we were having snow flurries in the area. Do the same thing with this one. I'm pull it back. Pull it down. Okay. All right. So we're all in place. The shelf will hold it in place. We can screw through it, but we can tap a couple screws into it once we have it in place with the air handler. We're not going to use the filter rack, so we can screw through. These sides here. Right now, I'm just going to tape them. I put this back piece on over the top of these two side pieces, so when the air handler slides back, it'll be slightly higher here. It'll be more apt to drain a little bit easier out the front. So, no harm, no foul. 
I'll tape it up. And that's like a basic base box conversion. Pretty easy stuff there. Nothing fancy. You can cut S or you can cut standing S lock so it folds around all three sides. But I just cut three pieces because I'm going to tape it all up anyway, so it's no big deal. If you want to make some calculated cuts, you can probably make it look a little bit better than this. You can round off these edges here if you want to, too. So, not too hard. Um, just a simple job so you can sit air handler on top of it. It's in a stand up attic, which is kind of rare here, too. Usually we're all horizontal in the attic, but this one is stand up, which is nice. So, I'm going to tape it up and I'll let you uh, see it once I'm all done taping. Okay guys, I'll tape on the top tray. I'm not going to play any tape here. I'll tape over the front of it in the filter door when I have it in place. But off the back side over here, we're going to have a return duct. I'm going to go ahead and put that collar in. Have it ready. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and cut the hole, but I'm not going to put the collar in. Reason being is that if I put the collar in, it won't fit into the pull-down staircase. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the hole, have it all ready, so as soon as we get up there, we can slap the collar on and get to it. And there's a drain pan, so I want to stay a few inches over the top because I have this big, bulky flex going to go into this, 16 inch flex. And the drain pan is going to be about an inch and a half, two inches tall, so I want to stay above that. So we come up to about one inch below the top there. We consider it, and we have like about four inches there. Yeah, four, four and a half inches. So I can make my hole. Voila. Now, a lot of you use a Malco hole cutter. Uh, I'm kind of old school. I don't do it a whole lot. I don't keep hole cutters and stuff on the truck. So what I do is I actually do it the old fashioned way, which is take a hammer and a screwdriver and smack it and it with snips. That's how I get my hand super strength by cutting stuff with snips on these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit it here. I got my hole right there. Take it, push it up and twist it so we get a nice opening there. And I'll take my reds, offset. What you do is you brace it off. You take one hand to propel it and one hand to snip. Go right around there. That's it. Doesn't take too long. It's definitely more of a workout than using a hole cutter, but sometimes the hole cutter blade gets dull. That can be a workout too. Got one little stick pin there. Gently cut out the insulation. Sometimes it tends to fall off if you're too violent with it. inch hole ready for the return tomorrow of course blam that's how it will be when it gets up into the attic so that's pretty much it for making this base box the rest of it will be finished tomorrow i can always paint the seams uh tape the seams pittsburgh's a pretty tight seam um, it's always good to tape it i probably will end up taping it just because i showed you guys i don't want to look bad so i'll go ahead and tape it here before i'm done and i can finish it off tomorrow All right, guys, there we go. The official one-man show, Talon 875 base box. Using a stock box I got from East Coast Metal Distributors, built for a Goodman unit. 
I could make the box, and I've done it in the past. On some of my videos, you see me fabricate ductwork for some of my jobs. I don't have my break table here yet, as you can see. It's a soccer goal right now. So, once I have that set up, I might do jobs like this if I have the time. That is the question. You know, I'm out here at night. It's 9 o'clock at night. Uh, it's been a long day, a long work day. It's been real cold, so I came to come down here to have some solitude and relax and make a baseball.